Well, I think uh, in the first place, it's happening everywhere. You know, it's happening everywhere. And uh, the best we can do is to uh, is the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we are doing our best uh, to minimize the 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 impact, the adverse impact of inflation. Uh, but of course, it's never enough because you are inflation will yank you out of your com comfort zone. And uh, no matter what you do, you know, even if you look after the prices of five essential uh, items, there'll be twenty other items that you ha that the consumer will miss out. Because these twenty others are actually have been part of the diet, have been part of their, of their, of their ladder, or been part in the in the in the in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and now they have to make do without them. So uh, while we talk about, well, while it is uh, acceptable that you know that uh, that we talk about uh, maintaining and managing the prices of uh, the essential items, mm -hmm. but uh, it will just be a list of uh, seven or eight rather than. Uh, whereas our people, especially with the uh, emergence of the middle class and the uh, lower middle income groups, uh, they are also have been able to enjoy, uh, you know, a more wider range of essential of, of food items or services, and now they have to cut back on some of them, and I think uh, that's that's the part that's hitting them hard, and um, so it requires adjustment. Uh, on, on for, for all of us and I, I suppose uh, being in charge of consumer affairs being in charge of uh, domestic trade makes me in the uh, puts me in the middle of it and uh, you you do see that there are imperfections in even in the distributive trade and you see this uh, uh, imperfection in the supply chain that that uh, needs correcting it's not just about price it's not just about uh, supply it is not just it is also uh, business practices, ethical business uh, is also about fair competition among businesses, you know, and it's about uh, about managing that managing that change. And um, and if in the past you could have a situation where you have a, a couple of um, steel mills, for example, you know, um, the, uh, being 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 protected and being managed uh, to 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 get. Um, uh, still prices right uh, but uh, at the end of the day with this open and liberal uh, business practice you have to you, you have to have a, a, a then put more effort onto uh, in, encouraging ethical business practices and fair business practices and uh, try to avoid monopolistic situations and so on and to, so as the, in the end to improve the the distribution and the supply chain and um, but uh, but that's going to be a lot of hard work and and so um, uh, right now um, when where consumers are infected and ev eventually if uh, with uh, prices of uh, steel and concrete and cement obviously the the next part is the next uh, component that will be affected or sector that will be affected will be the construction industry and this means in terms of higher costs, uh, higher prices for houses and stuff like that. So there has to be um, an interim uh, at the moment, uh, this, this interim measures that have been taken. Uh, but we need to do more. We need to, um, we can't just fine tune um, uh, the, the processes, you know, uh, but maybe you need a more radical approach. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I think we, we probably ha have to be f the subject of another interview, not in there, because it's not yet been done. Okay. So I think, uh, but uh, it's just you know, you know, but you know, it's just just I think al along the lines, the same basic premise that I started out with, that we are a part of the global economy, you know, and we are and we cannot uh, isolate ourselves from being that part. Of being part of that global economy, we keep our prices low for rice, and then suddenly we see for the first time our rice being smuggled to Thailand. Right in the past, it was Thai, Thai rice that was smuggled to Malaysia. We we keep our prices uh, petrol low uh, for uh, for our, for ourselves, although people complain that it's uh, is too high. Uh, we see our our diesel and our petrol being consumed by foreigners, and so. Um, they must. They, that means those are symptoms of the, of the fact that we are not yet completely part of that uh, global or regional economic system. I think being flexible about that uh, can help in some instances, but not necessarily all. 
because certainly it'll be some sectors that probably would uh, would be um, amenable to 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 civil servants uh, taking in civil servants. I mean, the, if the job is as a security guard, then you have a civil servant who will probably won't have enough sleep, and that's also going to be bad. So obviously, then it be it would have to be a more flexible kind of part-time job that allows them to uh, to have extra money. And then the, then the, then uh, it is attractive. It is a, a acceptable thing, especially since we do not we do not seem to have enough of our own uh, work, uh, Malaysians working in some of the sectors they seem to have be so dependent, you know, uh, on a on a very subsidized kind of lifestyle that we enjoy now. That we enjoy foreign workers, we enjoy foreign maids. We we enjoy our twenty four hour lifestyle, which is which is all you know, which is all may may not uh, may may have put us all into a very uh, sort of um, comfort, very comfortable zone. I think uh, we have to acknowledge that you have three million foreign workers in Malaysia. I mean, uh, we have to feed them too because they are able bodied guys, you know. And you have to feed them, you have to transport them. And in the end, uh, one of the emails I got from my friend. Uh, was that how he tried to use the public transport? And he told me you you can also try this for yourself. But let me tell you that the the buses are full of foreign workers, you know. And I'm I'm guess I'm and he says I'm stuck in uh, stuck with a bit uh, with a, 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 such a situation and a very grumpy bus driver, you know. And he's not feeling good at all after after having to take the public transport system, you know. And uh, it is it is some that means it's something that is. Uh, Inadequate in things that we have to do. It's not just about. It's not just about the politics. I think it's not just about um, uh, the last election. I think it's a lot more. A lot more attention has to be given to be to be devoted to management and 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 managing managing our resources better and infrastructure better. And if you look at uh, some of the businesses, um, they are even being subsidized. You know, the uh, businesses are being subsidized through. This control, import controls like APs for cars, and you know, and uh, we have to, we have to uh, be w willing to say, hey, enough is enough. Let's let's make ourselves really part of the global world. Let's make ourselves uh, an uh, uh, an important player in the ASEAN free trade area. You know, because this is this is what was the dream that we had: you know, a bigger market. Malaysia uh, playing is a strong, a strong role uh, in 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 AFTA playing a strong strong role in the global in the global market, which has been our role all this while. We had we were you know exporters of uh, exporters of rubber, timber, palm oil, tin, you know, and we have been uh, exposed to the global world for a long time, and we came out well with it. And we perhaps we we had to consolidate it for a while and build ourselves internally. And I think now we have the infrastructure. So okay, I think the next stage is uh, how do we manage ourselves better, and how do we manage our success, and 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 uh, and therefore um, be prepared to say discard the old ways of doing things and just say, you know, uh, this is the way we have to do it, and get everybody behind us, and and rather than uh, rather than trying to put out fires and look look out for the. Uh, Prices of chicken. Look out for the prices of uh, for the missing missing bags of flour or the, <laughs> all the missing bags of rice. You know, the, I think we have to uh, perhaps accept our 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 role and our position in the world. And 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 uh, it, it's a global world. It's a global economy. And our position in in the in the in the in AFTA in the ASEAN you know in the AS, in ASEAN region. So. I'm thinking, maybe thinking too dangerously. <laughs> thinking too much this can be dangerous as well. <laughs> <laughs> good news, more good news. Oh, well, any I think uh, it can't be any bad, any more worse. So I suppose be patient. Uh, you know, be patient. We, uh, I think, uh, we are uh, uh, quite a, a, a reformist-minded government, and uh, the changes that we have done in the, in, in, in uh, or have announced and will do. I know we'll uh, we'll make our country a little different than what we we thought it was in 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 the early two thousand in the early two thousand you know? in early early two thousand. I mean, I think we ha we have we have made we have made that turn. I think, and we are committed to making to continuing on that turn. 
and uh, and that's why I, I actually admire uh, the Prime Minister Dollah Badaw Ahmad Badawi. Not because he, you know, people say when I praise him, people say, oh, he's beholden to him. No, no, it's not that. I think because simply because I think the, when you are being attacked from, you know, uh, by a Prime Minister in waiting, by a former Prime Minister and by his own party colleagues, you know, and leaders, uh, I think. The man seems to do reasonably well, considering the circumstances, and still bent on on changing and improving uh, our country. And uh, so the 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 stress that I probably have to endure is nothing, I suppose, compared to what he has to bear uh, as prime minister. So, but I think the 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 saving grace of all this, I think, is because we have a, a new a new cabinet. And a different cabinet and diff a new ministers in it, which which uh, which which is which is good because we don't have to think the way that we uh, we are expected to think, you know, the traditional menteri sort of uh, thing. Um, well, things are more challenging anyway. Well, uh, then maybe so. The next hundred years, no, next hundred days, you know, <laughs> <laughs> next hundred days will be then will be uh, uh, we'll still have, I think, some surprises. Oh, we do. Uh, well, maybe we'll better we'll ones, you know, better, better ones, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, no, I have to, I have, I have to be very careful in how, what I say openly at all the beginning, you know, but uh, I'll leave it for the next hundred, the next interview for the next hundred days. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>